Hello guys, what's going on and welcome to another video here on the channel. So I've had quite a few of you asking me what I'm thinking of the Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Ryzen 4500 you have been testing on the channel that it's been about a month and I figured I'd just make a quick video uh, talking about it a little bit if I still think it's one of the greatest budget laptops that I've used and the short answer to that is yes but before we get into just kind of talking about it a little bit I want to say thank you to everyone here on the community so many new subscribers with this uh, laptop with the testing of games with this laptop um, about 900 new subscribers or so. Uh, thank you, thank you so much to everybody that's been subbing to the channel, liking the videos, commenting. Um, we have a really positive community building here, and uh, that's what I wanted to do. That's one of the big things I wanted to start this channel for. I wanted a positive, nice group of people that enjoy gaming and the technology surrounding gaming, and um, that we can help each other out here in the community answer questions and just have a lot of, as much fun as we can uh, with these videos so seeing that happen is really exciting and i really appreciate it product overviews i don't like to say review because it like puts you in a certain box of what i feel like you have to do as a reviewer um, i'm not technically a reviewer I got this laptop to do some things like Streamlabs and cloud gaming and whatnot when I'm away from my PC or to help complement my local PC. And it just wound up becoming part of the channel, a big part of the channel. Um, I would be excited to test and overview more products in the future because this was really fun and this is really exciting to do. But of course, money talks and I can't afford to just buy more laptops and more tablets and more PC parts and video cards and all that um, like I'd like to be able to do. So I just got to kind of do things as I can. What I do cover a lot on the channel are things like Shadow. PC, Stadia, PS Now, GeForce Now, game testing on multiple systems. I have three desktops and this laptop and possibly another desktop I'm putting together to do testing on for games and things like that. And when new parts come out in the future, I'll try to test new CPUs and APUs and things like that, whatever I can get my hands on. But it's very difficult to buy six, eight, hundred dollar thousand dollar laptops and, and devices and keep them rolling here on the channel so anytime i do get a new device i will share it here with the community we will test it we will go over it uh hopefully in the future the channel will grow big enough that we can do a lot more uh but even with all, all that money and backing and devices i still have a ton of content to make here on the channel um so if you're interested in gaming or technology around gaming or or things like this definitely subscribe to the channel and check out what i have going on so uh with that out of the way thanks again guys i really appreciate it new and old welcome Welcome to the channel. Now, I've had this Lenovo IdeaPad 5 for about a month. I've been doing a lot of testing. You know, we've had Cinebench and 3D Mark and BIOS testing and different BIOS settings and game testing. And uh, we've really kind of run this thing through the mill as much as possible. I've taken a lot of feedback from the community and given you, you, giving you guys the test uh, that you've been asking for as much as I can, whether it be system test, um, audio latency, thermals, gaming, whatever I can do, I've done my best to try to get all that out to you. Uh, now, after using this laptop for a month, I still love it just as much as I did the first day I opened it up and started using it. You can't go wrong with the AMD 4000 series uh, APUs in these laptops. Definitely, if you're shopping for a laptop, even if it's not a Lenovo, be shopping for the AMD Ryzen 4000 series. Now, with that being said, when you're shopping, there are a lot of you who have been sending me links to laptops that are just inferior to this one, even though they may have a 4500U or 4700U or whatever in them. You're sending me links to laptops that have 2666, I believe it is, uh, megahertz on the RAM, which compared to the 3200 in here, if you know Ryzen, faster on your RAM is better. And if you're asking me if you will notice it, yes. Yes, you're going to notice it a little bit on there. Um, as far as... The screen, a lot of the links you guys are sending me for the screen are 250 nit, 34% color accuracy screens that you're looking at. They're bad or they're TN panels that are really bad. So when you're shopping for your Ryzen 4000 series laptop, especially if it's not something just like this, please be careful what you're shopping for. Don't just look at the 4500U or the 4800U or whatever and think, oh, awesome. It's going to be just like that laptop because it's not. Um, so yes, it's mostly about what AMD has done here, but it's also about what these companies wrap around that APU and the package that they give you. It's going to affect the experience that you have. So please be careful when you're shopping for the laptops, feel free to hit the comments or direct message me on Facebook. I've helped a lot of you through Facebook and Twitter, uh, with different things, including PC builds lately, which is awesome. That's one of the reasons I started the channel was to help people with questions with their PC builds and parts they should use. Um, also with cloud gaming, shadow PC, Stadia, GeForce Now, and all that. And we've had a lot of great discussions 
thank you guys uh, for reaching out to me uh, and letting me help you out. And thank you guys for who, who have helped me. A lot of you have commented and messaged me with suggestions and things that have really helped the channel. So uh, thank you very much. Now, another thing. Uh, we're not going to deep dive because there are a ton of videos about this on the channel. I'm going to link in the description down below the video play, the game playlist, uh, video game testing playlist, and the eight or nine video playlist that I have of just deep dives into many different things about this laptop. So if you want to know a lot more about what's going on here, please go check out those videos, uh, especially before commenting on this video that I didn't review it or I didn't go over everything. I'm not intending to. Um, and there's a lot of information on the channel about this. So a lot of you have been asking me about the hinge. So the thing is, this is not a one-handed open. I don't know where this rumor started, but this, at least my model anyway, is not one-handed open. But what it does have is this bevel edge around here that none of my other laptops really had that I can just one hand pick this thing up very easily from anywhere my fingers fit right under there i don't know if that was on purpose or not but after a month of using it that's a big deal to me my other laptops have been two-handed i can't get my fingers under there and with this thing i just reach and i grab with one hand all the time absolutely no problem and i really like that so as far as the one-handed open it's not going to happen um, no matter what you do it's it's it, it's not going to happen here unless you shake it a lot. Um, but what Lenovo has done here is given you a fairly loose opening at first where you can just easily grab it and then pull it open. And my other laptops, like my Dells, I feel like I got to really clam them, really open them up. And this one hasn't really been that kind of a problem. So I do like that. So um, as far as springiness of the hinge, my wife's MacBook 2020, Air 2020 does this exact same thing. I could set it right next to this thing and do that. And it goes ding, 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 ding. It does the same thing. A lot of stiff hinges uh, do that. Uh, but no problem problems whatsoever so far in a month of using it with that keyboard's been great i don't love it as much as the macbook air 2020 i don't love it as much as my older dell laptops i've had uh, their keyboards but as far as a budget keyboard for 680 bucks um it's great i don't have any complaints about it it's just not my best or favorite keyboard i've personally ever typed on uh but it's definitely uh it's good and it's better than a lot of really crappy crappy plastic laptops that i've used uh so you can feel pretty confident that you'll most likely enjoy this backlit keyboard just fine trackpad works great i've run into no glitches with the system in a month no problems with the lenovo software updates are working just fine um no issues with speakers i know some of the 14 inch 4700 u models had some sound issues i've not had anything with this i've had this thing on every day all day if you've been watching my channel you know i've put this thing through a lot and i'm having no issues with it now as far as the battery goes i'm not i have not professionally tested this battery so i apologize i can't give you real hard numbers on the battery but just know depending on what you're doing with this laptop you're probably going to get three hours to ten hours so just kind of in your brain, figure out what you're doing, web browsing and emails. You could probably go 10 hours all day long, even with the screen full bright, you probably could. I've had this thing sitting just standby before for many hours and seen only five, 10% move on the battery, if that. Now, if you're gaming and video editing and photo editing and running stream labs and stuff like that, you could hit the system hard enough to get two and a half to three hours out of it uh, if, if you're hitting it pretty hard. But I don't think I've seen less than three yet. And really, honestly, that's pretty good. My older Dell that I sold partially towards getting this, um, if I was running it very hard, I might get an hour, maybe. Uh, if I let it sit still, I probably got three. So it was pretty rough even in standby. This thing just chilling, not even doing anything, you, it's going to sit there for 10 hours. I mean, it's going to do it. So just judge what you're going to do and think, okay, three to 10, depending on how hard I run this thing. Um, whatever they said online about 14, yeah, maybe in standby with the lid closed. I, I don't know. I don't think you're going to get 14 hours, uh, especially because most people are going to need to screen brightness up. This is a 300 nit screen. Um, so it's just bright enough and it gets the job done really well, but you're not going to turn it down much and save battery power like, like you might on a brighter screen. This one also did have the touch screen when I ordered it, which is nice, and about 64% color accuracy. This has been a pretty nice screen. I have no complaints. Um, the weight of the laptop is great. Somebody mentioned in one of my past videos, I was just throwing it around like it was a, a, a paper weight. I mean, yeah, it's, it's just not a, very, um, it's not a very heavy laptop. It's pretty nice and, nice and thin. I, I like it. Um, I like the design. You do have the aluminum, all, all aluminum top, and this particular model is an all plastic bottom. Some of you have been asking me about that um, as well. But yeah, no issues there uh, with that. Build quality, it's a $608 laptop, but as far as the build quality, it's it's better than most budget laptops you'll run into, and I really like it, especially since it doesn't have the plastic top. I would love to have an all metal. 
but it's not a deal breaker whatsoever. Um, it works really well. So what else do we want to get into here? Um, I do, I've used this a lot for Streamlabs and Photoshop. I haven't done video editing on here. Um, I would say, especially with the testing I've done with the uh, test apps, you could do 1080p60 just fine on here, especially if you're not running any other programs. Uh, but if you really want to do a lot of video editing with a Ryzen 4000 series, I recommend getting a 4800U with 16 gigs of RAM. And that's going to do you a lot better, and I guarantee you, you can edit 4K video on that. So I don't think you would have any problem. But with a 4500U, especially my model with 8 gigs of RAM, um, I wouldn't want to be editing anything more than 1080p60. But Photoshop works great, especially if I don't have anything else open because I only got the 8 gigs of RAM. And Streamlabs works about as good as it does on my desktop. So that's one of the big reasons why I had gotten it. The Wi-Fi in here is great. Uh, all of my cloud gaming experiences have been great. Some of you are asking me to test Stadia, GeForce Now, and Shadow PC on this laptop. I will be making you that video very soon where I will go through and play all three services on here for you, show you the latency, show you what kind of connection we've got, um, what kind of frame rate, resolution, and all that. And uh, I'll get that out for you guys as soon as I can uh, for that, show you all those cloud gaming services working. And I know a lot of you want to know how Shadow is running on here. It's running great. Shadow is working really, really good on here, way better than my order laptops so much better than my older laptops it's not even funny um, so how good your local hardware is actually does indeed affect how good your cloud streaming services work I hear a lot of people say oh you could play that cloud streaming service on an old potato not necessarily on uh, every cloud gaming service works a little bit differently and cloud PC service works a little bit differently but I'm telling you the better spec your local PC is or local device the better that cloud service runs it's just the way that it is so uh, what else we got here? Um, so I want to talk about um, the gaming a little bit. So light gaming on here. And this thing, uh, go check out the game playlist if that's something you're interested in. Red Dead Redemption, 30 FPS is doable. Um, the Witcher, you're able to get, uh, I think I played over 30 FPS on that. You can play 720p on some pretty AAA games on here. And you can do 1080p on a lot of games as well. Uh, Valorant runs great on here. Uh, I don't have a Fortnite test up because I don't really like to play Fortnite, to be honest with you. But um, but that, there's a lot of other tests up on the channel with that as well. So you can play 720p and 1080p gaming on here pretty darn well. It's not a gaming laptop, but wow, you'll be surprised if you go check out the gaming playlist on the channel just how well this APU, especially a 4500U, almost like the beginning of the line, uh, how well it can run games. So go check those out if that's something that you're interested in. Um, a couple of comments I had got I want to share. One of these is from PW in the community. He got his 4700U laptop in, and he did a Cinebench run for me and shared the information. Thank you so much. Um, he scored a 3100. Now, I don't know if he was plugged in or not and if he was using intelligent cooling or extreme performance. He didn't say. But that's a hell of a score, 3100 on a 4700U. That is in between a Ryzen 2600 and a Ryzen 3600 score. 2600 will get you around 2500 to 2600, completely silicone lottery. Anything can happen to you there. Ryzen 3600 from 34 to 3600 in Cinebench for the most part. So to hit 3100 on that 4700U is really good. 3100 is a really good score. I know Cinebench doesn't tell everything, but it gives us a good baseline. Uh, Rob Miller in the community, this has been a great uh, member of the community as well, uh, he sent me uh, the same thing, which was great, and he gave me a little bit more information. He ran his test on battery power and intelligent cooling, and he scored a 3200 in Cinebench. So if he were to go extreme performance, plugged in or not, he's probably going to hit 33 to 3400. So you literally are just nipping at the heels of a Ryzen 3600 desktop CPU with that 4800U APU. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible. That's pretty amazing. If you wanna do hardcore video editing and get more serious, if you need more power, I definitely recommend a 4800U with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, PW, for sending me those comments and giving me that information since I don't have those two kind of uh, APUs to test here. It was awesome to see, uh, to see what those scored. So thank you again for sending those in. Um, so yeah, guys, overall, a month with this laptop, I've been doing mostly testing more than actually being able to just use it, but testing is using it. So um, fantastic. I still don't really have any complaints for the price I spent, for the price to performance, what Lenovo has put together here. Um, I think it's amazing. So 
If you can't get this exact laptop or you can't even get a Lenovo and you're just shopping for a Ryzen 4000 series, that's fine. These, these 4500s, 46, 47, 48, soon to be a 4900U to come out, which is probably going to score, looking at what we're seeing here, 34, 3500 at least. Uh, at least in Cinebench. So um, if you're shopping for those, look at Dell and HP and MSI and Asus and whoever you want. But look at your RAM speeds. Look at what kind of SSD you're getting. Look at the kind of screen you're getting because this screen is fine. This is great. I have no problem with this, but some people would. Some people need a more color accurate screen. Some people need a brighter screen than 300 nits, whatever. But those 250 nit screens with the horrible color and whatnot or the TN panels, just please be careful what you're shopping for. If your screen is horrible, you're going to think the APU is horrible. You know what I mean? If the package around the Horizon 4000 isn't that great, you're just not really going to enjoy it. So, um, Pay attention to what you're shopping for there. Feel free to send me your questions in the comments or message me on Facebook or Twitter, and uh, I'll try to do my best to direct you or send me a link to something you're looking at, and I'll try to look into what it is for you uh, if possible and give you kind of some feedback. But uh, definitely just watch what you're shopping for. But if you're getting a new laptop this year, please be looking at the Ryzen 4000 series, whether it be a Lenovo or otherwise. Just be careful what you're getting your hands on. So, all right, guys, I know there's a lot I could cover here. There's tons of videos down in the description. Um, if this isn't a full review. This is just kind of my thought thoughts of having this thing for a month, testing it on the channel, answering some more questions for you guys, being able to show the numbers for that 4700U and 4800U, and to let you know uh, more game testing is on the way here. Let me know if there's other things that you want tested. And uh, cloud gaming services like Stadia, PS Now, GeForce Now, and Shadow PC are a big part of this channel. I'm going to be cranking out videos on those a lot, especially Shadow PC. I love Shadow PC. A lot of you that have been subscribed here for a while know how much I love Shadow PC, and I also test a lot of games here on different systems. So let me know what you might be interested in. If you've got family or friends that are also interested in game or tech type videos or game testing videos or cloud services, uh, have them check out my channel. I really, really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to growing here with an even greater and better community. Uh, it's been fantastic here so far. So thanks a lot, guys, for coming to check out this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Ring that bell so you know when I drop new videos. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you would and leave your comment down below. You guys know all that goes a long way to help the channel and then I always really appreciate it. So thanks again for coming to watch the video and I'll catch you in the next one.